Now let's talk about AI for transportation. As we all know, transportation is one of the largest industries in the world. There's a billion cars on the road. Just in a single day, 20 million ride shares are hailed on just Didi and Uber alone. There are 300 million trucks on the road carrying things to us so that we could live our lives. The infrastructure of society is made possible by all of these trucks, and they're carrying things over a trillion miles a year. There's half a million buses in just large cities alone helping us with public transportation. This transfer, t transportation industry is one of the largest industries in the world. It is also one of the most vital. Without it, society doesn't move forward. Without it, we don't have the fundamental infrastructure to live our lives. Everything we enjoy, everything we own, everything we eat and nourish our families with, all as a result of transportation. And yet, this is also one of the industries that has the largest waste. And the largest waste comes from human error. The fact of the matter is, these massive machines shouldn't be operated by humans, or they should be operated by humans with a, quite a substantial amount of assistance. The amount of waste that comes from accidents, whether it's damages or loss of lives, emergency room visits, insurance, measures in hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Over the course of a decade or two, the waste and the human suffering that comes from it is enormous. There's other forms of waste as well. Most of the cars that we enjoy are mostly parked. By and large, everywhere we look, there are parked cars. There are parked cars in beaches and parks. There are parked cars in cities. There are parked cars on, ca on campuses. By the way, this is the NVIDIA campus. There are parked cars all over the streets, littered everywhere. Wouldn't it be amazing if we also reduced that waste? And how could we change the face of our community? How can we reinvent our lives? The amount of waste that we could help contribute to reduction, if we could somehow bring to bear autonomous vehicles, what is otherwise known as self-driving cars, would be absolutely amazing. This is the reason why we've decided almost a decade ago to start working on autonomous vehicles and to start developing the technology necessary for some day for your car to become essentially your most personal robot. And it is so intelligent that it's able to perform its function, enhance your mobility, keep people safe, while, of course, do it intelligently and keep people out of harm's way. The technology necessary to do, do so is incredibly hard until just very recently. GPU deep learning has made it possible for us to finally imagine realizing this vision in the next year. We can realize this vision right now. Now, when you think about self-driving cars, at some level, it's relatively easy. It's easy because we all do it. It's so easy that we can't even explain it. How do you explain to somebody on a sheet of paper that has never driven a car how to drive a car? Well, the reason for that is because intelligence that we've come very naturally with is incredibly hard for computers. And as I mentioned earlier, deep learning has made it possible for us to finally crack that nut. That with deep learning, we can now perceive the world not just sense the world. Sensation is seeing, hearing, touching, those are senses. Perception is accumulating all of those senses and building a mental model of what it is that you're perceiving. We can now finally, with deep learning, perceive our environment surrounding the car. We can also reason about where the car is, where everything else is around the car, and where everything will be in the near future. We can predict using artificial intelligence where everything else around us and where we will be so that we can decide whether the path that we're on or the new path that we're going to take is going to be safe. We also have the ability now, as I've shown you earlier, with the same with robotics, motor skills and walking skills, that we could use the same technology to teach a car how to drive just by watching us. 
By watching us, observing us, learning from us, a car could literally learn how to drive. That supported by HD maps, which are maps in the cloud, another way of thinking about in the, in the context of intelligence, knowledge, a priori knowledge, we can now compare what we perceive with what we know to be true in the cloud and determine what to do. We created a car called BB-8, and it's an AI car, and it runs everything that I just described, this brand new operating system and a whole bunch of AI networks. Let's roll it, please. Take me to Starbucks and stand my tail. I wanna live like it's Mardi Gras with a phone car and an entourage. Hey, don't need no r and r to regular life, I say I was. Hey, living life in the fast lane, may your pain only be champagne. So please come join me, one thing, good vibes only. I just cash my check, I ain't paying rent. I just quit my job, go to mall, get long. Don't care who you are, don't care where you're from. We all got one thing in common, we just wanna have fun. Hey. So what you wanna do? So what you wanna do? So what you wanna do? Huh? One thing, good vibes only. I just cash my check, BB-8 is running in the East Coast, is running in the West Coast, and it's just incredibly fun watching BB-8 zipping around. And meanwhile, you can never stop learning. The world is changing all the time. It seems every single week, a new road is being beaten up or fixed, something is being added, lanes are being added, roads are being shifted. We have to continuously map, continuously relearn the environment. All of that requires AI computing. It is one of the reasons why we dedicated ourselves to building a fundamental new computer that would go into a car that has the ability to do all of this deep learning processing and to do it at very high rates. We call it an AI car supercomputer. And our AI car supercomputer used to be multiple chips. And we're building a new one, it's called Xavier, that fits into a little tiny computer like this. This is what an AI supercomputer looks like for your future self-driving car. It's a little tiny computer like this, and it has sensor information that comes in, and CAN information, CAN information controls the accelerator, the brakes, the steering, and all of the other things that you want to control inside the car. This runs a new operating system we call DriveWorks that takes multiple sensors in, fuses it, recognize and perceive, localize, reason, drive, and it does so while connecting to the HD map and comparing ourselves relative to the information that we get from the HD maps. Incredibly powerful. Eight high-end CPU cores inside this chip, 512 of our next generation GPU, it is ASL D. The computer is ASL D. The chip is ASL C. It is the ASL Automotive um, Safety Integrity Level. The quality level, the reliability level of this computer is bar none. And then lastly, we do all of that. The performance of a high end gaming PC shrunk into a little tiny chip, 30 tera operations, trillion operations in just 30 watts. Little tiny computer, 
We can chain a whole bunch of these together depending on the application, and this will be the future of our self-driving car strategy. 